is debating right now a new small arms treaty that if adopted and if ratified by the United States would have serious implications about your right and my right to freely enjoy the Second Amendment of the Constitution, which gives us the right to keep and bear arms. As I've told you many times, I'm one of few of the talk show hosts in America that practices both the First and Second Amendment every day. Well, I've had a lot of concerns about this treaty as well as many other people. Just give you a little idea, though, of where you need to go for your information. You don't need to go to places like uh, Snoops. I was just, just looking at uh, this, uh, this, this Snoops.com. You know, a lot of people go, well, Snoops says, and they treat it as a final authority. Snoops is saying that the Small Arms Treaty will not have any up impact on our Second Amendment rights, and they are just wrong. This uh, website is run by folks who are left-leaning in their ideology, so be aware of that. But someone who does know a little bit about this, and uh, I'm sure we're going to enjoy hearing the things that she has to say, is uh, our next guest, which is uh, Jan Morgan. Jan Morgan's been on this network uh, several times before. She is an Associated Press award-winning veteran television journalist. She's now a citizen activist. She has uh, still a lot of television work. She's won awards for her television work in the past. She is uh, all over the place. As I mentioned earlier, she has one of the largest followings on Facebook of anybody I know, and we are so proud to have Jan Morgan with us today. Jan, welcome to AFA Today. Thanks, Buster. I'm so excited to be with you. Anytime I get to talk about America and the Second Amendment, it's going to be a good day. <laughs> I hear you. Well, me and you both, and I appreciate that so much. All right, let's talk first about this treaty. Um, what do you know about this treaty, and what kind of fears do you have about it? Fears and concerns, Buster. First of all, let's to really understand this treaty, you have to look at the source of it, and that should tell you really all that you need to know. Yeah. We're talking about the United Nations here. The United Nations has never been a friend to the United States. The United Nations is a, an enemy of liberty, a friend to tyranny, and a tool of globalism. So how does, the, how does the United States of America have anything to do with the United Nations? That's the question of the day. Another thing I wanted to point out about this treaty, you've got uh, Ahmadinejad leading the charge, hammering this thing out. Now, my question is, what is he even doing at the table? That's the truth. <laughs> I mean, Iran, aren't they supposed, isn't he so, supposed to be sitting in a corner somewhere after getting his hand slapped? He doesn't even abide by the nuclear arms treaty. So why are we letting him talk about small arms? Um, but let's, let's go back to the source. Once again, on the source of the United Nations Small Arms Treaty, this thing really started back when President George W. Bush was president. But thank goodness President Bush told the United Nations, no way. Yeah. Not only are we not going to participate in that treaty, we're not even going to come to the table and sit down for the talks on this issue. Because right. President Bush said this is a national issue, not an international issue. Well, President Obama in 2009 reversed the position of the United States. And not only did he send Hillary Clinton to the table to sit down with these criminals and thugs to talk about this, but also he sent her with a pledge of support for the small arms treaty. And Buster, let's get real. This this treaty is not about weapons of war. It is about small arms. It is about personal firearms. And and I'm glad you brought up the Snopes issue, the Snopes. And then someone on my page today, when I was promoting the fact that I was going to be on your show, some guy came on and he said, well, you know, according to Wikipedia, this really is not going to be an issue. It's simply about uh, arms trade. Well, it is not. I think that former U.N. Ambassador John Bolton is a very credible person. You would think. To, yeah, to talk about this issue. And here's what John Bolton has said about the U.N. Small Arms Treaty. He says that gun owners should take this initiative very seriously. He states, quote, that the U.N. is trying to act as though this is really just a treaty about international arms trade between nation states, but there is no doubt that the real agenda here is domestic firearms control. I'm telling you, the nations of the world are not comfortable with the fact that the United States has a constitutionally guaranteed right for the citizens to keep and bear arms. They can't stand that. That makes no. it extremely difficult for us to be a nation to be taken over because not only would you have to deal with our military, but the, but the citizenry has their own weaponry that uh, would be involved in a conflict like that. 
They don't like it. They would do anything in the world to try to do away with that. Now, one of the things that's going to happen if this thing gets ratified is every gun owner in the country would be the information about who you are, where you live, your Social Security number, what weapons you have. All of that would become property of this United Nations body that would oversee the impl- uh, the implication of the, of the uh, execution of this treaty. So exactly. everybody would know who in the United States has weapons and where they are. That is the first step to taking over and taking them away. And for exactly. all the detractors, you can say, you know, no, no, you got you got to know that America's better than that and the president's a, a kinder fellow than that. That's all you have to go on is the goodness of these politicians because once this thing gets ratified, you have to admit that it's possible. That's the thing I talk to folks about on a lot of these things, Jan, is it's possible. Uh, right. You know, the new, the new uh, executive orders that the president signed. Oh, the president would never do that. Well, it's now possible. You have to at least admit that. And we are at the point that we don't want this to become a possibility. Well, we have already seen that this president, ha- well, he's clearly shown a propensity to trample the Constitution. He he has a total disregard and disrespect for the United States Constitution. That's no secret. That's a fact. His policies have shown that. Obamacare is a perfect example. And then, of course, his Justice Department head, Eric Holder, and Fast and Furious is another example. Which, you know, <laughs> let's talk about the irony, Buster. Yeah. There are a couple yeah. of things that are really uh, the irony of this whole thing. When you've got uh, the United Nations saying, well, we've got to do this. If you go to their website, this is hilarious. You go to the UN website, and they've got all these UN representatives in this video uh, talking about how they have in their countries that illegal arms possession is out of control, and, and and thugs with firearms are taking over their countries. And we've just got to do this. We've got to get these firearms out of the hands of criminals. And I'm wondering how they plan to do that. You know, gun control is not about guns. It's always been about control. And the only people who are affected by more regulations and more gun control laws and gun bans are the law-abiding citizens, not the criminals and thugs. That's right. The criminals and the government will always be armed. And if nothing else, history should prove, not only to gun owners but to the liberals, to everyone in the world, that gun confiscation and gun ban is the beginning of tyranny. In the 20th century alone, 170 million people, Buster, were annihilated by their own governments after being disarmed. Mm. Our founding fathers were smart enough to know, to see ahead, and they knew that we had to have, that that an armed citizenry is a free citizenry, and they put that Second Amendment in place because it is our last line of defense against tyranny, and we have to guard it. We already have 30 thousand gun control laws on the books in this country, which is outrageous to me. But um, we, we must be very vigilant about guarding the Second Amendment. And I'm so thankful to the National Rifle Association because those fine folks have jumped in on this issue. And, of course, regardless of what the U.N. does and what our president does, this has to have a majority uh, vote of the Senate in order to be ratified. And right now, thanks to the National Rifle Association, 58 Senators have said they will not sign uh, support, sign on for support of this treaty, and 13 of those are Democrats. Well, let's talk about that for just a minute. Harry Reid has made it clear that he's going to try to get this thing through. And I heard some talk the other night. I don't know if it was uh, uh, who it was. I heard somebody talking, I think, on Fox News about there would be procedures that Harry Reid could could go through that could make this thing sort of de facto take effect without a vote. Uh, of the uh, Congress of the United States to ratify it. Do you know anything about that? You heard about that? Well, that would not be legal, but if they do it, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Nothing about this administration surprises me. Look at what the Obama administration has done already. There are over he's, he, his administration has committed over 25 impeachable acts since he has been in office, and a number of those rise to the level of treason. I have my own personal views about why our uh, conservatives in office have not pursued this, Uh, but hopefully the election in November will change all of this and will get America back on the right track with a new president. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I like you and most Americans who understand this. I'm very frightened by this treaty, and I'm afraid that if there is any way possible 
for the uh, leftists in the Congress to get it uh, ratified in some way or for it to take some sort of legal effect. They are going to try to do it. You know, I told someone the other day, uh, they were asking about uh, why we'd not heard a lot out of this president or this Congress about gun control. Mm-hmm. And I said because they're letting the U.N. do the job for them. So the exactly. United Nations plan, I think, is definitely the plan that folks like Harry Reid and Barack Obama are depending on to be the next great gun control effort in this country. Mm-hmm. We've got to get our folks to call their senators and their representatives and make it absolutely clear that you will not tolerate the government of the United States ratifying a treaty that will affect our First Amendment and Second Amendment, our, our Bill of Rights, our amendments that we have guaranteed us in the Constitution. You're not going to approve of any kind of U.N. treaty or action that takes away the sovereignty of our country like this. Yes, Buster. And if, you know, if phone calls, if making a phone call is too much trouble for somebody, the NRA has made it very easy. You can go to their website or you can go to my Facebook pages. I've put a post up there that includes a link to a petition that the NRA has already written up. All you have to do is go put your name in, your email address, and your zip code. And that zip code automatically tells the NRA which senator represents you in your area. They've already written a letter out saying you do not support this. All you have to do is put those three items in, push send, and it sends a letter. Uh, I've done this and already received a response from my senator. So, you know, that, that is one easy way to, to make your voice heard. Okay, how it, can they find your sites now? Uh, Jan Morgan. I'm the only Jan Morgan on Facebook that's got close to 100,000 followers on one page. Uh, well, it's actually 105 if you count the friends. That's 100,000 subscribers and 5,000 friends. That's awesome. On the other page, Jan on America, uh, there are about 30,000 conservative patriots there. My new website is going to be up in about 8 to 10 days. That will be janmorganmedia.com. I also have a link to my website, which, you know, Buster, what I'm doing there is offering information, and I'm going to be putting information out there that Facebook won't even allow me to say. I've I've been warned six times by Facebook they're going to delete my account simply because they say my posts are offensive. And all I do is post facts, Buster. It's the craziest thing ever. Uh, we um, know about that. Believe me. <laughs> yes. But anyway, those are those are some ways that you can get in touch with me. I don't know how much time we have, but I wanted to cover another aspect of this treaty that, that you haven't mentioned um, that is being discussed. Of course, the final the final uh, treaty has not been drawn up completely. They're, they're, they're hammering this out now. But one of the suggestions that a number of countries are supporting is concerning ammunition's shelf life, so that ammunition manufactured in participating countries would only have a shelf life of one year. That just, that's an outrage. Uh, you, anybody who knows anything about firearms and people who buy ammunition, those of us who like to go target shoot, we can't afford to buy ammunition that only has a shelf life of one year because it's cheaper to buy ammo in bulk. Yeah. If you shoot a lot, right, and you can't afford to buy in bulk, and then if you don't use it all, it's no good within a year. So uh, we just don't need a an international party entity governing anything that has to do with our Constitution and our Bill of Rights. We just we don't need to go there. And why this president is allowing that is it's it should be clear to everyone. It should be should be crystal clear. He's got an election coming up. He can't afford to get on the issue of gun control because Democrats don't even support him on that, a number of them. He's going to have to use the U.N., as you said, and he's doing it. Yeah, he is doing it. It is, as you mentioned, uh, something that George Bush said no to, but Barack Obama has uh, reinserted the United States into, so we have got to stand against this thing. Uh, if If you are not a gun owner and you don't believe in gun rights, that's fine. We appreciate you having the right to have your own opinion. But you need to understand that if America loses the right to keep and bear arms, it will change the history and the complexion of this nation for the rest of eternity. I'm telling you, you don't want your Second Amendment rights monkeyed with. So uh, let's get on the phone, call our senators, our representatives, and let's let them know that we're not going to stand for this at all. Jan Morgan, thank Mm -hmm. you so much for being so passionate for this and being on uh, our, our network with us again. Anytime, Buster, you just call me. All right, I'm let always us know. ready to talk about America. Great. Wonderful. Now, let us know your uh, your sites again so folks can find Okay. Them. Jan Morgan. Uh, there are a number of Jan Morgans on Facebook, but once again, mine's the only one that's got close to 100,000 uh, subscribers. And 
or Jan on America. That one's very easy to find. But if you really like engaging with fellow patriots, the Jan Morgan homepage is the best one because that's where a majority of the conservative Americans are hanging out and tons of gun owners and gun rights folks. So uh, there and then by next week, you should be able to find me at janmorganmedia.com, my own website. All right, fantastic. Now go and click on that uh, NRA link that she's told us about and use that to contact your uh, representatives and your congressman. Jan, thank you so much. Thank you, Buster. Have a great day. You too.